Gracious and loving God, I invite you once again to speak through me and in spite of me that somehow my words are your words this morning. God, we thank you for your reminder to us once again of, of who we are and whose we are. We are your children. We thank you for the elder that, that wrote this wonderful letter to the church. The church of the first century and, and the church of today. God, open our eyes, our ears, our hearts and our minds to what you have to say to us today. God, we love you and we thank you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. So this is our ninth week in the study of, of 1 John. And, and I think this is probably my longest sermon series ever that I've ever done. And I've uh, really been guided and, and shaped by this little book towards the back of your Bible. And uh, it's, it's connected to John's gospel as we'll, as we'll see today. And this week is on family traits. Now, uh, you know what a family is. This is your family that, that, you, that you live with, also the family of folks that you surround yourself with, maybe even broader sense, the, your church family or your, your work family. Uh, lots of different groups that, that we influence and that have influence on, on us that we're connected to in a deep and personal way. And a trait, a trait is, is a distinguishing, distinguishing characteristic or quality. That's what a, a trait is. It's a distinguishing quality or characteristic. And we get some of these traits from genetics, right? From our family. Some of these we don't get to choose. We can't, we can't help it. And I have a, a grandmother. I had a grandmother. She died a few years ago. Uh, my nanny on my dad's side. And one of her favorite things to do was tell us how much we reminded her of our parents. Do you have grandparents that do this often? I think I'm going to be one of those grandparents that, that does that. But every time we would, we would go and we'd see Nanny, she would say, every time without fail, she would see me and she would say, Lordy Daniel, you look just like your daddy. That's what she would say. And, and whatever it was about us, one time I remember I was watching TV and she saw my feet and she said, oh, you sure do have your daddy's feet. And and I remember thinking, Nanny, I, I have my own feet. <laughs> she would say that. And, and I had this, this sort of image of her when she, when she met Jesus face to face, when she died and she met Jesus, that, that she saw Jesus. And the first words out of her mouth were, Lord, you sure look like your daddy. <laughs> I love that. I love that image. She, she would do that. We, we have these, uh, these family traits. Some of them we don't get to choose. I was in a... I was in a um, in one of these little fast food restaurants and some music came on, it was kind of funky. I was like 11 or 12 years old and I started doing this. And uh, my, my stepmom said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just dancing. And she said, your dad does the same thing. Would you stop? And so I had no idea. So, so even if it, maybe it's your, your, your dance skills are, are terrible. Maybe you got that from your parents. Some of these things we, we, don't, get to, we don't get to choose, you know, for, for better or for, for worse. And, and some things... We do. We do get to choose. We, we carry the traits of our, of our families with us and, and we get to choose that. I, I remember choosing at a very young age that, that, that music would be very important to me, that, that this runs in my family, that music is a very important part, sort of on both sides of my family. They love music. And so this is a, a trait that, you know, a distinguishing quality or characteristic about me. I, I love music and, and I hope to pass that down to my kids. And, and there's other things too that I, that I want to pick up. My mom is so patient with, with our, our kids, more patient than I am. Maybe that's something that I could learn to be more patient. Some of you might, might uh, have favorite recipes, these little traits that sort of run in your family. Your family cooks a certain way or speaks a certain way. Some of these things we, we get to choose. And, and sometimes, sometimes we, we really were concerned about about traits that we don't want to pick up, right? And this happened to me uh, a lot more as a parent, as a dad. There are, there are traits of the world that I don't want my children to pick up from me or from anyone else. I was reminded of this. I, I, love, I love to spend time with my kids 
on the river. And we go to the Comal River in New Braunfels and I take my kayak out. And I've, I've done this for several weeks now. And this is the second year I've done this where I'll take my kayak out and we'll, we'll be in this lazy river uh, right on Hinman Island if you know where that is in New Braunfels and there's a tube chute there. And, and so we're on this, on this river and inevitably there are, uh, there are tubers that come and they are, I guess they're in college, they're, they're younger and they, they have this thing where they, they use language of the world. You, you see, they come from maybe families of sailors you see, and, and they use colorful metaphors and, and they fall off and they're tossing these, what do you call them, F-bombs? They're tossing these around and they're, and they're falling off of their tubes and they're saying things. And, and I, I'm not personally offended by that language. Matter of fact, back when I was a sailor, I used that kind of language. But, but now, but now I, I have a totally different feeling as a parent. And I, I want to, I want to, wash some, get some soap and scrub their mouths out. And then I want to cover my children's ears because I don't want my children to have these, these traits of the world. I want them to have these, these family, family traits. As we've seen this week after week, this, this sort of paternal love, and it's out of great love for my children. It's out of great love. And you see this sort of paternal love in the elder over and over and over again in 1 John. He, he cautions the church about not looking, acting, sounding like the world. That you're set apart, you're, you're different from this and you have a different set of family traits. And, and they keep coming around and, and around again in, in 1 John. One thing that we see from 1 John is rather than think about it as, as like a, a, a straight line of thought, it's more like a spiral where he keeps coming back around to these themes. These are family traits that we are to carry with us. They are, they are these. Obedience, love, trust, to know. Remember we talked about a couple of weeks ago about going from believing to knowing and that you're, you're set apart, that you're, you're holy and you're anointed. Last week we had that reminder, we, we did an anointing and you all left uh, smelling like Jesus as the lady said, I was smelling like Jesus. And that, that, this, is, that this is to say, you are, you are set apart. You have a different set of, of qualities and characteristics that are Christ-like. You're anointed, you're set apart for a purpose. And this week we're reminded once again that we, that we are God's children. We are children of God. And of course, we, we see this, this big statement in John's gospel, in, in John's letter, in the light of John's gospel. And he, he said it like this. He said, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed, remember believe is such an important concept for John. To those who believe in his name, in his name, which means his, the whole of Jesus, his life, death and resurrection, everything. He gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. There's this, there's this image that we carry with us that's, that's in the scriptures that we were orphaned in our sin, but God came and adopted us, brought us into the family, made us part of the family with all the, with all the traits that go with that, all the distinguishing characteristics and qualities that go with that. As we would say in, in Paul's writing, Paul would say this in Romans, you have received a spirit that makes you not fearful slaves. You've not received the spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. And now we call him Abba, Father. You have been adopted in. I, I read an article about Steve Jobs this past week. There's a new biography that's coming out and it was, it was all about Steve Jobs and, and he was adopted when he was really young. And he says that he, he grew up knowing that. He, he knew that he was adopted. His parents were very open and honest with him about that. And, and, uh, and then one time when he was six or seven years old, he was talking to a neighbor girl. And, and the neighbor girl asked him this question, so does that mean that your real parents didn't want you? 
And, and he said it, it just it went like lightning bolts in his mind. He said he just didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to answer her. And he went into his house crying and crying. And, and, and he said his parents came and set him down and said, Steve, you have to understand this. You have to understand. They said this. We specifically picked you out. And he said, they both said it. And he said, not only did they both say it, but they emphasized every word. We specifically picked you out. And for him, that changed everything. We were orphaned in our sin, but God specifically picked us out. And there is so much joy in this, knowing who you are, that you are part of this family. And, and it's so, it's this overwhelming joy that, that, when, that when John speaks about it in this letter, it's it, it pretty much all in, in caps lock, you know? Like if, if you read this, it's like he's yelling this at us in the, the kindest possible way. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. Now, now I want you to see that first word, see. Now, in, in the Greek, this is a, what they call a aorist punctiliar imperative, right? Y'all know what that is, right? That means caps lock, right? <laughs> it means it jumps right out at you. See, do you see? Don't miss this. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we would be called children of God. Every time that we celebrate a baptism, whether it's a, a believer who's older and, and comes into it and says, and says, these are, this is my family that's adopting me. That's what it is. When someone, believer's baptism or infant baptism, it, it, it doesn't matter. It is a celebration of God's grace adopting this person into the Christian family. That's what that is. It's a celebration of that. That person saying, these, these are the traits that God helped me to have these traits. And then when it's a infant, infant baptism, it's an infant baptism and there's a, a promise that gets made every time. Do you, do you know this? This promise is made and, and that promise is that we all make together that we will guide this child and, and the language is that we will lead this child in the way that leads to life eternal. In other words, we will promise to do our very best to give the best of what church can offer to this child so that this child will carry the distinguishing qualities and characteristics of Jesus. Do you understand that's what's said at a baptism? That's the promise that we all are held accountable for as a church that these traits will be lived out in this child. That's what baptism is. And I, I wanna back up just a little bit because I, I, there's a couple of verses that I sort of skipped over. It's verse 28 and 29. And verse 28 kind of took me aback when I looked at different versions of this. And I want you to see this. It says this, and now dear children remain in fellowship with Christ so that when he returns, you will be full of courage. And this is the New Living Translation. And not shrink back from him in shame. The word ashamed, that, that word means to shrink back from in its original language. To shrink back from. Now, dear children, remain in Christ so that when he returns, there is an urgency in John's letter, he, he speaks about the last hour, the, the antichrist that come and deceive and deceive you, that, that there's an urgency, that time is running out, that you, you, must, you must have these qualities. And, and the qualities that he's talking about, well, you, you have courage. And courage in Greek doesn't even really have a equivalent. It, it, it means, it, the word means courage, but it also means boldness or, or be strong in this. This is a quality. That, that we have as Christians and do not shrink back from him in shame. 
Now, when I saw this, it's, it's been working on my heart all, all week, this idea of, of shrinking back in shame, that when he returns at the end of time or when Christ returns for me and, and, and sees me, that, that I would not shrink back from him in shame. And over and over and over again, we get this image of God as a loving parent. And over and over again, we, we get this, this image of God. Jesus, Jesus calls God Father, Abba, Daddy. And, and then he, he paints this picture in the parables of, of God as a, as a loving father standing on the end of his driveway waiting for his child to come home. Stands outside of the party waiting for the other son to come to the party. I want you to know that this verse does not say he will shrink back from us. Christ is not ashamed of us. He is not shrinking back from us. He is actively pursuing us. And the fear is in this, in this one little statement is that we, that we might be shrinking back from him. And why would we be shrinking back from him? Well, I don't know about for you, but for me, I, I would be shrinking back if, if I carried more of the qualities and characteristics of the world. Now, dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ. That's the, the key, the key to this, to this whole thing as children of God, as carrying these, these qualities. And it's over and over and over again. It's mentioned 27 times in John's letter. It's mentioned 40 times in John's gospel. This is so important. We can't miss this one trait. There is one family trait that all of the others come from. There is one trait that, we, that, I, that I want for myself, I want for my family, for my children. There's one trait that all of the others flow from and that's this, abide in him. It was in the last verse, sometimes it's remain in fellowship with Christ or abide in Christ. And every time it's minos, minos, abide in him. This is, the, this is the key to the whole thing. That if we abide in, in Christ and Christ abides in us, we bear fruit, we bear fruit. And if we don't abide in him and he does not abide in us, then we can do nothing, nothing. That all that will perish and die. Abide in him. I uh, caught an image of this this past week. There is, a, there is an image of abiding that I want you to think about. And that is in an inner tube in the river. And it's one of those lazy rivers where you're just floating down and you're just in this tube and you've got sunscreen on so you're not getting sunburnt. And, and you're just, abide. that's what it looks like to abide in the river. You're abiding in the river. And I thought, that's, that's, really, that's really cool. That's a great sort of mental image. But then yesterday we went to Lake LBJ and we did not abide in the river in the same relaxing way. What, what happened was we, we had our inner tubes tied onto this really fast boat. And uh, I did not abide so well in the river. I, 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 the boat turned and I flipped right out, landed on my back and, and uh, lost my breath and got a great big headache. And, but I have this image of my daughter abiding in the river. Lila, Lila held on to this tube and Carly was driving the boat and she could not throw Lila over. You know, Lila's a pretty strong swimmer, but, but no matter how many times she turned around, no matter how many times she went through the waves and the rapids, she did not, she did not let go of her tube. She didn't, and she didn't flip over, and she didn't let go. Finally, we were like, okay, we're done. Somebody else's turn, you know. She's abiding, and, and, and you know how she did it? This is the coolest part. We saw her mouthing these words, and we were like, what is she, is she singing? What is she doing? Is she singing? She must have a song in her, in her head. And uh, turns out, no, uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't it. We said, what were you, what were you saying out there when you were on that, on, that, uh, on that tube going through the water so fast? What were you saying? 
And she said, well, I was praying. I was, I was praying. And uh, I was, well, that's cool, you know. And then, and then on the ride home, she said, Daddy, you know what I was praying? I said, what, what, sweetheart? She said, I was saying over and over, Lila, you are strong. The word of God lives in you. And that's how she, that's how she could abide in the river when it's going so fast. I thought, man, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for the sermon illustration. When, when life is pulling you so fast, when there's waves turning, shaking you in all directions, the, the way to abide is to remember, is to remember who you are. That's one thing that this letter is, has really helped me with, helped our family with over and over and over again. There's these, these wonderful, wonderful words of encouragement. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. There, there is all kinds of ways of discipline, disciplining children, you know, extrinsically, extrinsically disciplining children. And we do that too. But, but what's really gonna matter is the intrinsic stuff, knowing, hey, you know, our family doesn't roll like that. That's not, that's not what we do. This is, this is the traits that our family has. And then we go out into the world and we bump into other folks and, and we share those family traits with them because they're contagious. This, this love that the Father has lavished on us, it's the greatest thing. We are called children of God. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us your children, for seeing us in our, in our sin and our death and coming and rescuing us. God, we, we need a savior. God, help us to trust you, to obey you, to live in a way that when others see us, they know what family we're from. That we're not from this, this world, that we're from a different family, a family that loves and cares, a family that, that steps out, that takes care of the, the widow foreigner, the orphan. God, move us in that direction. We love you. We pray all these things in the strong resurrected name of Jesus. I reach out and you find me in the dust. Send a mountain of untruths can separate us. Sing it again, I reach out. The simple gospel, I will.